Welcome to the Happy Hour Show. My name is Alan Chamo and I'm your host. It's Wednesday, 7 p.m. Today we switch the time a little bit, but as always, we are here. If you can hear me, go like this. Wonderful, wonderful. That's great. I'm so happy to see so many of you that are joining us and coming back to the show. This is great. So thank you very much for joining. And we are also streaming live on YouTube and on Facebook. So you can also watch the show there. So if right now you are watching the show somewhere on YouTube or Facebook, you can put a comment and I can take a look at it and we can still interact. And also you'll be able to watch the shows if you wanna watch them again, or maybe you missed the show, you can also see it on YouTube after that. And we are improving and you know we're doing better and better as we go so for those of you who are new here my name is Alan Chamo I'm the host I'm also a mentalist magician and I'm joined here with Ryan Ahan how you doing Ryan hello Alan how you doing over there on the East Coast good to see you my uh, friend. I'm great I'm great I'm so happy you're here uh, joining us uh, from Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Uh, how's everything? Oh, I love your jacket. Look at you. Yeah, you know, put a little Vegas on today. Why not? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. I I need to get um, I need to get myself one of those. <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I'll see if I can get you one. They're custom build, but uh, no problem. Yeah, custom build. Okay, very good. So we'll, we'll talk about it after the show. Hey, yeah. today we have a great show. We have a, a wonderful magician today. Uh, he's, he's really amazing. His name is uh, Chris Michael. He's going to join us uh, later today. Uh, so be ready to be amazed. Uh, stay tuned. And today we're going to change things around a little bit. Uh, of course, we have the Liars Club. I know, Ryan, you're looking forward for that. You know, you know that's the highlight of my day, Alan. That Liars Club is, uh, is a great game. Very, very fun. Yeah, you, you're becoming really good at this. <laughs> and, and today, actually, I'm going to teach you a trick. So who would like to learn some magic, something that you can show your family? Yeah, you want to learn, Ryan? Yeah, Perfect. I do. So, so let, me, let, me, let me show you real quick. All you need to do f for this magic, and uh, let me take over here, is a toothpick, okay? So watch this. All right, ready? Just toothpick and watch. All right, if, if you're a kid, please don't try this at home. All right, watch. <coughs> One second. <coughs> watch, okay, now watch this. And back again. Yes? You wanna learn? You wanna learn? Yeah? Let's let let's see your hands. All right, I'll teach you how it's done, but it, I'm gonna teach you a little bit later during the show, so you have to stay tuned, okay? So if you're joining again on, on Facebook or YouTube, welcome, welcome to the happy hour show. We are streaming live right now, and I will teach you how to do this trick uh, later in the show. But before that, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to I want to get going because we have an amazing entertainer, and I want to give him at uh, the right time really some visual visual magic. Um, I I know him for for a while, uh, but it's actually the first time I get to to see him in action with the with the audience. But I heard lots of things about him, so let me read because. Um, 
he, he has so many acc accolades, so let me, I uh, have to read it. So, tonight performer has taken the country by storm. In the past two years, he has done two national tours, worked with America Got Talent as a writer and consultant, and helped entertain millions of Americans. He's currently the performer of choice for the Washington football team, US Army, and even the FBI. He loves what he does, and it will surely show when you see him perform. Please join me in welcoming Chris Michael. Hey everybody, how are you? Can I see those hands on the screen, please? Come on, I wanna see everybody. Ruby, you got it. Mia, Mia, I can't tell if you're a picture. Okay, you're not. Well, what's up, you guys? My name is Chris Michael, and I don't even want to introduce myself just yet. I wanna get right into some magic. Let's do this. Can we spotlight Mark for me, please? Let's spotlight Mark. Mark, I have something here. Can you see what this says? Mark, I'm going to give you a second to unmute yourself. For everybody watching, this says drink on the bag. You should have drink. seen the looks on people's faces outside when I was carrying this into the building in a suit. A lot of weird faces I got. Inside of here, I have one drink, and I think I predicted what Mark was going to say before anything happened at all. Mark, do me a favor and name any drink in the entire world out loud. Milk. 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 No, I, I heard you. I'm just surprised. Milk. <laughs> You know, most people would go for a drink like Bud Light or red wine, but milk. What I have, ladies and gentlemen, is a LaCroix. That's not right. We should never judge a drink by its container. It's the contents inside that matter. Mark, check this out. Mark, we have never met before today, is that true? Absolutely, we still haven't met. <laughs> well, very good, check this out. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to Mark Milk. That's amazing. <laughs> By the way, uh, yeah, LaCroix and Milk, I know they're very different, but they, they do both suck, so I guess it's similar in that in that regard. Alan, were you going to say something? That was amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Alan, I, I want to make sure this is your program. This is my time to get started, I'm assuming. It's all yours. It's your stage. Awesome. Well, for those of you who didn't hear my introduction or maybe have never seen me before, my name is Chris Michael. I'm known all around the world for doing lots of weird and interesting things. I'm also known for being a professional magician and a consultant for four national TV shows, and this is super big news. I haven't told anybody, not even Alan knows this. Just this morning, I signed a one-year deal with HBO. All right, congrats. <laughs> yes, I'm so pumped for it. Uh, it's actually such a good ad. I saw it online, it was $14.99 a month for free movies and TV shows on all my devices around the house. So if you guys wanna sign up for a year of HBO, I think it should still be available, yes. Um, of course, there is no magic show that exists, no matter what TV shows or accolades I work with, if I don't acknowledge the audience. I'm going to say hello to a few of you guys. We've got Miss Valerie and I believe Cy. Am I saying that correct, Cy? Can you nod if I got it right? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, but I want to try something with everybody here. Let's do a stretch to make sure we're ready to see some awesome magic. Everybody put your arms straight out. Thumbs down. One arm up over the other and squeeze nice and tight just like this push out and stretch as far as you can and i would like to say welcome to alan chamo's yoga program i'm your host <laughs> once your hands are here let's make sure everybody's got it mark you've got it ruby you've got it even though your hands are hard to see mia okay you're not a photograph like i thought very good to see and then once your arms are here we're gonna go up uh, down to the side the other side and go like this. Yeah. No, okay, maybe that didn't work. Uh, and I'll show you why. I always knew growing up that I was a little different than the other kids. I focused very much on two things. I focused a lot on this first thing, which I believe is more important than almost anything in the world, and that 
is intuition. The other piece that I would focus on more than anything was always my time. Oh, sorry, I meant my time. Wow. And this show is going to be all about those two things, intuition and time. So many of you probably have such a good intuition that you had a response to me when I first joined the screen. You decided already whether you liked me or disliked me, and a lot of the time intuition can change. For instance, if we're around a lion, we automatically feel scared. But the more time we spend with that lion and it doesn't attack us, we'll become to feel more comfortable. So I wanna take this a step further. I clearly today have just joined this call and don't know any of you personally, but yet somehow right behind me, up here, I have an envelope. Can everybody just point their finger up if you can see the envelope? I wanna make sure, because if I need to adjust it, I certainly can. Okay, great. Inside of this envelope, I have one of your, and I'm gonna tell you who it is right now. Uh, Robert, who's this lady next to you? We're gonna ask you to unmute yourselves and we're gonna spotlight Robert's iPad. My wife. You're, well, I, I figured as much. Uh, thank you for claiming her, Robert. What's her first name? Shelly. Shelly, hi Shelly. That's my dad's name, that's crazy. Isn't that crazy? It's not. <laughs> it really is. It's <laughs> but he is beautiful. Shelly, I have an envelope right up here behind me. I want to show it to you real quick. And Shelly, while I'm doing this, can you please verify we have never met before today. We haven't even seen each other before right now. Absolutely. Never ever. Inside it says first ever memory. Every day at breakfast during quarantine, I've been sitting down and practicing something my therapist taught me. I have to practice therapy because growing up, my grandfather always told me that I was telepathetic. He's from the north, so the teller was silent, but I knew what he meant. And Shelly, at breakfast, I write my thoughts down as they come. I don't acknowledge them, and then I throw them away. That way I don't get caught up on anything. No anxiety, no depression, just thoughts that don't mean anything. My whole life is filled with thoughts that don't mean anything. Can you relate? <laughs> Absolutely. And maybe more so Robert, in fact, too. So uh, Shelly, yes. I want you to think of one of your first memories as far back as you can remember because first memories are something we often think about but never share with other people you have your first ever memory yes and if you wouldn't mind i want you to share that memory out loud with the zoom call playing in the park but you i want you to be more specific was there somebody there with you was there something specific that you were playing on It's a vague first memory. Then go for one that has a little bit more detail. Let's go a little bit further <laughs> along the path of your life. Playing in the park might be your first memory, but that's a lot of people's first memory. Let's get specific. Give me one maybe just a little bit later in life that you can remember more vividly. No pressure. Take your time. This is your moment. I don't want you to feel pressure. <laughs> it's my moment. Let me see. Um, for a woman who doesn't have many memories, let me say... Um, Oh, this is a crazy one. Oh, that means it's a good one. Would you mind sharing this one? Are you comfortable doing so? Uh. <laughs> okay. Well, think of one that you can share. I'll give you one more try. I think you've got this. I've got a bob <laughs> after my husband. Let's see. A great memory. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have a good memory. Okay, and you're doing a good job, by the way. Don't, you know, you didn't take as, many, as much time as most people. This is great. So if you could, share us some details. Get specific here. I want to start to know who you are when you were younger. Dancing with Mrs. Oh, wow. Shepherd. My recital. Are you still a dancer? I'm not the way I was when I was a kid, no. But I do of love course, to dance. yeah. A lot of people that, that got into something a lot when they were younger, you know, always end up falling out of love with it at some point in their life. Like, I'm lucky that magic was never one of those things for me, but playing guitar was one that I used to love, would go to recitals and then eventually fell out of love with. But the fact that you still try and, and love to dance is really important. Mm -hmm. Shelly, here's what's crazy. Remember what I said about time and intuition? Yes. The two most important things in my life? Mm -hmm. Well, we brought you back in time to a point in your life that you remembered, but have never shared with anybody on this call. And I use my intuition every morning at breakfast to find out what thoughts I should be writing down and let sail away. 
occasionally a thought will enter my mind that feels like a memory. I can almost imagine that I was there, but I know it doesn't belong to me. And inside of this envelope, let me show you, my hands are empty. Sealed away. Can you see sealed? Yes. The only way in is through this clip at the very top of this envelope. And inside, before we ever met, I had written down that somebody on this call's first memory would be. First memory. It would be. Dancing at a recital. Oh my God. <laughs> Mrs. Shamburger the Hamburger was my teacher. <laughs> you called her the Hamburger? Her last name was Shamburger. So we would oh. And Mrs. Shamburger the Hamburger. I've heard Ryan referred to as a hamburger before, but never a miss. That's awesome. Well, guys, can we give Shelly a round of applause? Give you a round. Thank you. That was great. Thank you guys so much. If you want to find out more about me, you can Google the name Chris Mike Magic. I've got tons of videos online, and I would love to see you guys support over there. I can connect with you and start to build a family with you guys as well as we start to get to know each other as well as I now know Shelly. Alan, I believe my time is up, so I'm going to pass it back over to you however you see best. Thank you guys so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Bye. That was amazing. That was amazing. I, I think it was too short. What do you guys think? It was... I, I'm putting I you on the spot more. here. Yeah, you can do one more. Yeah, so how much time do I have? Because I would love to get a little crazy. That was crazy. Yeah, that was pretty crazy. But if you want to get more crazy, we... Hey, you're in the place yes. to get crazy. So go... Cr you know, okay. you have... How, how much longer do you need? Um, Three minutes? 40. Maybe five minutes. Five minutes. Okay, what do you guys say? Let's give it to him. Five minutes. Go, go for it. Go for it. You're doing great. Okay. How many of you have a piece of paper and a pen nearby? Okay. Okay. If you okay. could, I want you to grab a piece of paper or f index cards. You're going to need four pieces. So either f a piece of paper you tear in four or four pieces of an index card or post-it note. Grab those and a pen real quickly, and I'll tell you what we're going to set up together. I want everyone to be able to play a major role in this. Perfect. Jill, you're on top of it. Valerie, wow, with the pink post-it notes, very nice. Mark, you're on top of it too. You just need a pen. All right, very good. Ruby, killing it, killing the game as always. Your shirt matches your walls. I'm surprised to see this. Okay. Mia, you look like an influencer. I'm going to spotlight you for a second, Mia. Are you an influencer of sorts? Oh, I couldn't hear you. You got to try again. Oh. Uh, well, give me a thumbs up if you're an influencer. Thumbs down if I'm wrong. Oh, what? Okay, get out. I got to kick you out of here, Mia. You're done. Get out of here. Remove that spotlight. I don't want intuition, guys. It's strong. She meant to put a thumbs up, I believe. <laughs> Hey, so if you have a piece of paper and a pen, here's what I need you to do. On one of the pieces of paper, you are going to write the color orange. Write the color orange for me. And show it to the screen once you've done, once you've done so. Write the color orange for me. I'll play some music while you guys do this. I need you now. Very good, very good. Write the color green. I know this is a yellowish green, but I have a yellow one as well. So this will be green, the color green. Show it to the camera once you got it written down. Very good. Mark, you have neat handwriting for a gentleman. We have the color yellow. Let's write the color yellow on a different one. And the color pink. Very good, you guys. Thanks for following along here. The color pink. And then I need somebody to be my spokesperson. And honestly, Valerie, I'm getting a pretty strong signal from you. Valerie, I'm going to add you here. Would you be my spokesperson? Okay. okay. <laughs> what I need you to do, Valerie, is you're going to go into the gallery view. You're going to go to the top right where it says view. Click that and go to the gallery. Okay. And now the scary music. Ladies and gentlemen, what I have here is a fish hook. Three-pronged barbed and very, very sharp. 
I may not seem it, but I love to fish. I grew up on Long Island, New York with all the loud Italians. And yes, somehow I ended up loving fishing. This fish hook, three-pronged, is designed so that if it were to catch a fish's lip, there is no chance for them to escape. It will tear and rip flesh with ease. And I'm going to be placing this fish hook into my mouth. When I place it into my mouth, I'm actually going to make sure for your entertainment pleasure that only my tongue and the roof of my mouth are touching the hook. So that if I were to pull on this hook in the wrong way, my entire career would be over. Or at least for a very long time. What's going to happen is I'm going to have you all vote together on which color string I pull. Because only one of these is tied in a knot onto the fish hook. And we're going to see, instead of my intuition being tested, if your intuition can save my life. Valerie, your job is when everybody holds up the cards in the gallery view, you're going to have to tell me which one gets the most votes because they're going to be voting on which ones they believe is safe and whichever one that they deem safe is the one that I pull. Got it? All right. And if you're on YouTube or Facebook, you can vote as well. Okay. Here we go. Ah, I'm so scared. I'm trusting you guys. What color do I pull first? Hmm. Yellow. Pink. 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 Yellow, yellow. Can't see Jill. Can't see Jill. What color, Jill? Can't see Jill. Yeah, pink, pink, pink. Yellow. Right, Valerie, which yellow. one has the most votes? It looks like, from what I can see, pink looks like it has the most votes. Pink looks like it has the most votes. Oh. Give me a go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Go, go. Oh. <laughs> All right. Three to go. Ladies and gentlemen, cast your votes. Yellow. 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 Yellow feels the tightest. Here we go. Oh! Sorry, I pulled the post-it note off first. Let me make a magical gesture. Last one. Ladies and gentlemen, cast your votes. 50-50 chance my career is over. I'm trembling. I don't want to look, just tell me. Okay, it looks like, looks like orange. Oh God. The oh wood my that's tied. You can even see the knot. Ladies and gentlemen, give yourselves a round of applause. Also, be sure to send Alan a lot of angry messages for allowing me to do that on here. <laughs> oh my god. You are crazy. Crazy. I'm gonna go lay down on the floor. I really hope that you guys enjoy it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Let's give him a hand, everybody. Chris Michael. Wow, you are such a, a Michiganer. <laughs> <laughs> Was yes. that one of the old words? <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, it's, that's a word in Yiddish, actually. But uh, talking about words, uh, you know, yeah. that's now the liar's game. But yeah, it means crazy in Yiddish, which is a, 
a forgotten language uh, slowly yeah. it's being forgotten. I'm from <laughs> Long Island, don't you forget. I'm familiar. <laughs> ah, so, so you know. Okay, yeah. very good. <laughs> All right, Chris, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Hey, stick around. Right now we are about to start to play uh, Liars Club. Uh, Ryan, are you, are you around there? Yes, uh, I got you, Alan. What do, what, what do you think? You know, it was pretty crazy, no? That was, that was really incredible. I can only imagine that in, in life, when he's doing his live, live shows, that he lets somebody come up and grab that stream and yank on it. That would be, yeah, yeah. That would be incredible. Amazing work, Chris. Good job, buddy. Thank you. He, yeah, think about it. Would you, would you in, a, in a live, in-person show, be willing to pull the string, knowing that you might you know, pull his tongue with it? Right. Well, I'll tell you, gonna, you can... a lot of. Oh, Ryan, sorry about that. I thought Alan no, was ahead. asking me. I'll be quiet. Yeah. I was going to say, no, you know, a lot of people think that trick uses uh, some sort of computer graphics or editing. And I assure you, it's some crazy CGI. No, <laughs> I, I do, in fact, let people pull on it. And uh, it makes me, you know, it's weird how sometimes intuition can feel like fluid running down your leg. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. You should call it fluid. Uh, running. Catch a yeah. big crit. Yeah. All right. Let's mm -hmm. let's get this going. We have a very very special game today. Well, we are up to the letter O. Okay, and we're going mm -hmm. alphabetically. So, for those of you who don't know the game, Ryan, could you explain how how it goes? Yeah. So this is the Liars Club game, and also known as Two Lies and a Truth. And uh, the object of the game is for everybody who's watching out there to decide which one of us is giving the correct definition of this word now these words are are words that you've probably never heard before they're I, I don't think alan's making them up i think they're real words they are real words but what we're going to do is myself alan and chris are going to give you a definition of this word and your job is to vote and tell us which is the correct definition now it's not going to be obvious it's not going to be easy so you have to kind of look into our eyes and see who you trust most so uh, why don't you give us the word of the day there alan so today's word is, and I'm always having this problem. Thank Obsolenium. you. Thank. Obsolenium. Obsolenium. Yeah, I think yeah. you don't pronounce the G, so it's obsolenium. Yeah. Obsolenium. Now, you're not allowed to Google it. It's not fair. So for those of you who are joining on YouTube, Facebook, hey, don't Google it. You can also yes. participate. So that's the word of today. We are up to the letter O. So Ryan, you want to go first? As oh, always. sure. Yeah. So uh, I always, you know, know the answers to these words because yeah. I'm quite the uh, English major, you know. Um, yeah. So th the root word of this is obsolete, which, of course, everybody knows means not useful. So um, the very simple definition of this word is a, uh, it's a place or an object that is irrelevant. You know, it could be added to a story and it just doesn't add to the story, doesn't add to anything. Uh, the place itself is meaningless, it's obsolete, and that's what you call an obsolenium. So we'll put it here, so a place or object, object that, is, that irrelevant. is irrelevant. Yeah. Okay, Ryan, you are really it's good at this. I have to tell you, you, you sounded convincing. You sounded convincing, but hey, you, you're full of it. I mean, and we know that people already learned no. that about you. Yeah, no, they that's did not, not learn that. That's, that's not No, I'm so trustworthy. Okay, I know the meaning, and okay. honestly, I'm a little embarrassed because I shouldn't know the meaning of this word, not because English is not my first language, because mm. it's so far and distant from me. Um, so okay. this is something that happens to couples, um, I would say when they are like many, many, many years, when, when the, you know, a little a senior in age um, uh -huh. and it's it's something that happened basically I don't know how to say it without you know it's a little embarrassing for me and, and you're probably wondering okay how Alan would know that we so this is it. when when your sexual desire is oh. winding down basically that's that's what it is <laughs> and it happens to a lot of people and I'm sure and I'm I hope that it's not happening to you that watching here but that's the meaning. It's a, a whining sexual desire due to age. So it has to do with age. I'm sorry to tell you. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen to everybody, but some people 
not, not our audience. Them. No, no, not our audience. Our audience, no. Yeah, and I, I yeah, that's uh, definitely no. And it's not going to happen to us either. And so you, yeah, that's the real, that's the real definition, by the way. And uh, that's the oh my gosh. Chris, First of all, let that? me just say, listen, Alan's definition: a loss of sexual desire. That's not obsolenum. That's just called living in Florida. Okay, <laughs> I'll be honest <laughs> with you guys. All right. So. The irony of this real word here is is just weighing on me. And I almost wanted to chime in, chime in because the real meaning, and you actually will hear it more in the news these days. People on both sides of political parties are using this word a lot, obsolenum, which means people who deny facts or science. So it's pretty much using the term obsolete. It's people who believe things that are absolutely obsolete they, or they refuse to acknowledge science and therefore their logic is obsolete. That's where the term obsolenum comes from. Or as the Brits call it, Obsolinium, <laughs> just like aluminium. Um, yeah. And I don't know why you would ever trust a guy in a Vegas jacket, for one. And number two, yeah. bald guys are never to be trusted unless they have a mustache, i.e. Dr. Phil and Steve Harvey. Wow. Mm. Okay. All right. So All these right. two are the perfect I example of obsolinium. They refuse to acknowledge simple facts or science through the definition of this word. Yeah. I see. Well, wow. yeah. Pretty strong there's stuff a, there's there. There's a lot of All people. Right. There's a lot of people. Uh, uh, lately in America, uh, unfortunately, that uh, according to your definition <laughs> are absolenium, complete absolenium. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, obviously, that that w w nobody believes you, Chris. You know, you knew here, but so maybe you're going to convince a few people. But uh, you know, people right. people know better. People know better. Um, so let's see. Let, let's see who who they believe to. And uh, if you are on Facebook on YouTube, uh, please put put a comment. Uh, let us know which of the words and i'm going to put it also here so everybody can see i know that uh, on facebook and youtube you cannot see chris but that's the that's the definition c so let's put the poll up and um, where is the poll 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 there we go and let's launch the poll so there you go you can vote 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 go ahead everybody vote look at that first of all <laughs> Yeah, and you know what, Chris, go ahead. You can vote for yourself. I know that you, you got only one vote, <laughs> and it was probably you. It was probably it was I, I got three now, okay? I'm just starting to teeter a little bit. They don't trust because I'm a magician, that's all. And all they're right. upset that I, that I, a lot of them probably live in Florida, so I probably really uh, upset a few people. <laughs> yeah, listen, you have to be careful here, you know? <laughs> okay, so, wow, yeah. I guess uh, your jacket, Ryan, is uh, convincing some people, or, or maybe it's, <laughs> it's blaring them. It's blurring them, and and they they no, they don't understand. It's the honesty in my face. Don't don't blame it on my clothes, man. Okay. I'm the real deal. All right, so I think uh, we have 85 percent that voted, and okay. I'm gonna give everybody a few more seconds. Go ahead, vote. 85 percent voted, so it it should pop up on your screen, and you can just need to click one. It's a multiple choice. Click the one you believe the most, and wow, it looks uh, we are. Chris, we, we are pretty close, you and I, we're almost tie, uh, but people don't really trust you so much, I guess, so you are <laughs> number three. So let's, uh, let's end the poll and show everybody the results. So here we go, we're showing the results here, and uh -huh. according to the audience. Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> told you. Yeah. Let's acknowledge that I won, okay, in, in this part of the game, okay, all right. Yeah, well, you, you have a face of, an, uh, of a nice person that would never lie. That's because mm -hmm. people don't know you really, really well. So according to the audience, 10 people, most of you believed okay. Ryan. Okay. Right. Um, I, I got a comment here from, uh, by the way, from YouTube before I, I continue. Uh, <laughs> that's, I, I'll put it here so everybody can see it. So Steve says, uh, hey, Alan. Uh, right then, every woman I got <laughs> with an absolenium. So that was from YouTube. I guess uh, <laughs> they believe that he believes me. I guess. All right, number two is uh, myself with seven, and then C, which is the last one, is Chris. C for Chris. Uh, only six people believe you. So now that's All the right. moment of truth, the moment you've been waiting. Let's see who was telling the truth. So. All right. When I count to three, you raise raise your hand if you tell the truth. One, two, 
and three. B wow. is the right wow. answer. Well, wow. I tried. I tried. Sorry, I want those my... six people to hold an insurrection with me <laughs> against <Yeah>. Alejamo. <laughs> All those oh ten God. people who voted for me, thank you so much. <laughs> Alan, you did it again, man. Hey, you, you uh, you're good. Yeah, you you you're actually good. People believed you. You you fooled most people. So uh, yeah. Good for you, good for you. Uh, right. You're a good liar, Ryan. You're a good liar. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. That was fun. You are very good at this, uh, but I guess not good enough. So uh, mm. we'll let you go. All right. Everybody's having fun. I know you're waiting to learn how to do, how to make the toothpick disappear. I'm going to teach you in a second. Uh, before we continue, there's one more poll. I want to, you know, we, we are doing some changes here, uh, improving, and I want to hear from you today we did the show at 7 p.m so in general would you prefer 7 p.m 5 p.m 6 p.m we're trying to figure that out i think i created another poll for this let me see if uh, i have it here so just vote for this here it's a it's a, a poll i want to know what is the better time for you is it five like we've been doing up until now is it six or is it seven it just helps us to know and to improve so vote right now. We have um, very good. Most of you have voted. Well, I see that uh, you like seven o'clock. Uh, for some, you know, seven o'clock is, is a funny time. For some people, it's it's before dinner, like myself. Uh, I you know I eat late. Argentinians eat very late. Uh, what, what what time do you have dinner normally, Ryan? Um, about eleven p.m. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah, I'm I'm around nine-ish kind of thing and uh, uh, but some people some people have dinner at 5 p.m you know so uh, yeah, that's true yeah so e either the show is going to be a uh, right in the middle of dinner or right after it but and you're you're, you're talking to the, the east coast of course because over here on the west coast uh, this is the afternoon right i mean it's only yeah. it's not even five o'clock over here right now yeah which is lunch yeah. for you probably yeah lunch after this yeah okay <laughs> so all right so according to to you thank you for for letting us know according to you 7 p.m. 60% uh, of you voted for 7 p.m. So we will take notice. Uh, it's not going to happen for next week because we cannot change it drastically like this. But we will start doing uh, in the future at 7 p.m. Uh, hopefully, Ryan, you can make it at that time. It's actually better for me. So it's actually better decide, for you. Okay. Man. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Now you've been waiting for this. I'm going to teach you how to do the toothpick trick so let me uh, take over here for a second there you go so let me just show for those of you that just joined let me show you one more time how it goes mm. <coughs> it's not a hook but a toothpick is pretty it's uncomfortable in your throat watch All right, want to learn? It's a pretty easy trick, but promise me that he will not reveal the secret, okay? But you can share the video with your friends, of course. All right, here we go. Take a toothpick, and all you need to do, I'll show you from the side, when you open your fingers, it goes behind your thumb. So all it is, is I have a little bit of uh, scotch tape, and I don't know if, I don't have out of focus on my camera right now, but basically it's scotch tape right here, a little bit of tape. And all you do is when you open your hand, the toothpick disappears. See? Close your hand, appears. Open your hand, disappears. Just make sure that you don't have people on your side because it's not that amazing if you have people from behind you or from the side. So disappears, appears. And the part with the mouth, by the way, kids do not try it at home with the mouth, but you can just go make it disappear, make it reappear. Adults, you can go like this and do like you're putting it in your mouth, but you're not really doing it from the side, it's gonna look like this. Okay, and it's really hiding here. And then you can open, make sure the thumb is here, and when you go, it reappears. You got it? Yes, you like it? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, 
Ryan, before we get going with your amazing music, we already put the link uh, for next week. If you want to sign up, please do sign up. We have another amazing magician from Washington, D.C. His name is Mark Phillips, and it's going to be next Wednesday at 5 p.m. For those of you joining on YouTube, and if you would like to join on uh, Zoom and be able to participate, uh, like you've seen, you can do it. You just need to sign up or you can watch it again on YouTube. So there you have it. Ryan, what do you have prepared for us? All right. You know, I got just a couple songs here uh, uh, this week for us, and I wanted to play a song um, uh, from one of my favorite artists, and, and I'm, he's one of my favorites because he's actually become a friend of mine, uh, luckily enough. Uh, I was backstage at a show here in Las Vegas that comes to year pretty much, uh, comes to town pretty much every year. It's the David and Foster Friends uh, concert. So I wasn't performing or anything, but I was in the green room. He had given me a backstage pass, and I was just kind of taking in all the sights, a lot of celebrities going in and out. So into the green room walked a very tall man, a very uh, famous man, a very intimidating man, that's for sure. And for better or worse, we kind of hung out for a couple hours and um, became friends, I thought. Although I didn't get a Christmas card last year, so we're not as tight as I thought. As I thought so... Uh, anyway, I invited him to my show, which is at the Planet Hollywood Hotel a few days later, and to my and everybody else's surprise, he showed up, and he brought this huge entourage, must have been 14 people um, who showed up with him, and he sat there in the third row of my theater, and I played for him that night one of his biggest number one hits, and it was one of the great thrills of my career, that's for sure. So I want to play that for you tonight. Uh, this man, his name is Seal. And a song I played for him is called A Kiss from the Rose. Hope you enjoy.
Thank you very much. Appreciate that, all you SEAL fans out there. Uh, I want to take you uh, to the theme parks and the movies of Disney. A lot of my friends know that I'm a huge Disney fan, and I spend a lot of my time working uh, for the Walt Disney Company. And I was one of the youngest uh, music Imagineers they had on staff at the time. So to this day, all of that uh, Disney music remains some of my favorite music to play. And I want to play a song today from 1989. And it's a very special song in the fact that it was the last completely hand-animated motion picture that the Walt Disney Company did. They went to a lot of computer-assisted animation and things afterwards. Uh, but this was the last of its kind. It's from 1989, like I said. It's a wonderful movie called The Little Mermaid. And if you remember a character in that movie called Sebastian, he did a wonderful song called Under the Sea. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate you having me today. I think you're muted. I can't hear you. Hi. Yeah, I need to make there a T-shirt. Unmute yourself. That's going to be the T-shirt for 2020 and 2021. <laughs> hey, Ryan, amazing as always. And you well, today Thank you played one of my favorite songs, uh, mm. Seal. That was it was yeah. amazing. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. Please join us every Wednesday. 5 p.m. for now <laughs> on Zoom or YouTube or Facebook. Sign up. The link is in the chat. And we hope to see you next week. Share it with your friends. Let them know. You can just give them a call and say, hey, there's a great show, happy hour every Wednesday. Join us. You can share it on your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever it is that you do. Uh, send the link. Thank you. Ryan, take it from here. Thanks, everybody.